Hi everyone, it's Ken here. In the last of this three-part series on making gears, we're going to use CNC to cut the gear spokes. In the last video, I took you through the entire process of generating the G-code, which, which are the CNC instructions, uh, for making one of the medium-sized gears. And I pointed out that all G-code instructions have to be referenced from a point which is X and Y zero. We chose that point as the center hole of, of the gear because if you recall, each of the gears I made had a, a center hole drilled and reamed for a dowel pin so that we could relocate it you know, from the lathe to the mill and back again. So once the machine knows where X and Y zero is, all of these instructions, which are the paths that the tool is going to take to clear this material out, they're all based relative to this x, y, zero point. Now that you understand the theory, let's take a look at how this happens in the real world. I begin with a waste piece that's going to hold the gear, and it's something that I can machine into. First I locate the center of that piece, the rough center, it doesn't have to be exact. Then I center drill it. Next, I drill it undersized for the size of the dowel pin. And the final step is to ream it to a size which is just about a thousandth of an inch bigger than the dowel pin so that we get a nice tight fit. Now I can take the dowel pin and locate it in that center position. And once it's there, I can mount a gear on it, knowing that it's centered. Once we've chosen that point on the physical machine, this is the machine controller. You see where this crosshatch is here? That's where the machine thinks the cutting tool is right now. We want it to be here at zero, so we say x is at zero and y is at zero. Now the machine knows that all of its moves that are laid out here in the G-code, all of these X, Y inst uh, instructions are going to be relative to this center point. Once the gear is clamped to the table, I load up the first tool we're going to need, which is a 3 8 inch end mill. The first step is to find where the tool just touches the top of the gear surface. Because although we've already told the machine where X and Y are, we haven't yet told it where Z is. And Z is the point where the tool just touches the top of the material. Once that's been determined, we can come back to the controller and set Z to zero. Now, if there's still anyone out there who thinks that CNC is just a matter of pushing a button, you're right. After all that setup work, we can now finally push the button. The G code begins to execute line by line, and we can actually watch where the tool is in the toolpath, but it's more fun watching it actually cut material.
When the controller is finished using the 3 8 inch end mill, it pauses and asks me to switch over to a 1 8 inch end mill. Once again, I have to find where Z0 is, where the end mill touches the top of the gear. Again, I zero the controller, and then I hit the continue button. The smaller end mill is now going to reach in the corners and clear out the material that the larger end mill couldn't reach. The last step for each spoke is called the finishing pass. The end mill transits around the perimeter of the waste that we've removed removing the last 15 thousandths and giving us a nice clean finish. Now that every other spoke has been cut, I reposition the clamps, load a new G-code program, and cut the remaining three spokes. To complete the gear, I drill three holes, which will be used later to mount the gear to its arbor. The remaining medium-sized gears were all cut in the same way. The smaller gears, however, present a new challenge. There's really no room to fit the clamps to hold the gear in place and still clear the collet that holds the end mill cutter. So what I've done is created a small fixture plate that allows me to squeeze the gear down to the table and therefore have the clamps further away. The smaller gear also requires using much smaller end mills.
Naturally, the largest gear presented the largest problem. I thought it would be a simple matter of mounting the gear to the mill table and just cutting out the spokes. But it turned out that the Y travel, which is the front to back travel, wasn't large enough to reach all the way across the gear. So, now what do I do? My first thought was to use my rotary table. If I mount the gear on top of the rotary table, I can cut one spoke and then rotate the table to the next position, cut the next spoke, and so on until they're all cut. Unfortunately, mounting this large gear on the small surface of the rotary table created a situation that just wasn't very rigid, and you need rigidity to be able to cut metal. So I went back to mounting the gear directly to the mill tape. My idea this time is that since the gear is symmetric, I can mill all of the spokes on the top half of the gear and then flip it around carefully and mill the spokes on what was the bottom half of the gear. This ended up working. What I did, instead of machining out all the material like I did on the smaller gears, instead I screwed down the waste material and then was just able to run an end mill cutter around the perimeter. Now that one half of the gear is done, I can flip it and machine the other half of the gear. Well, finally, here is the result of all of that work. The gears are now complete. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you'd like to be notified when new videos on the build of this clock are available, please hit the subscribe. If you're interested in looking at some of my other projects, you can find them on my website at www.zeman.com. I will see you all soon.